Hey, this is Presto Walker. Two points are picked at random uniformly from the border of a square with side length L. What is the probability the distance D between the points is larger than L? I saw this on Reddit Ask Math, which credited a post by Vos Software on LinkedIn. And I also credit the user ImpressiveDig6678 for posting it and the solution from the user 555. Pause the video if you'd like to give this problem a try. And when you're ready, keep watching to learn how to solve this problem. I will first demonstrate how you can estimate the answer numerically, and then I will present an analytic solution. So let's get started with a simulation. The first thing we'll do is we'll set up a coordinate system. Suppose the lower left corner of the square has coordinates of the origin 0, 0. Without loss of generality, suppose the square has a side length equal to 1. Then the other vertices of the square have coordinates of 1, 0, 1, 1, and 0, 1. Now we will pick two points at random on the edges of this square. Knowing their coordinates, we can use the distance formula to calculate the distance between the two points. We can then say, for each trial, is this length greater than 1? We can then do this for many, many trials. In each trial, we're picking two random points and we're seeing if the length is going to be greater than 1. After we do 1,000 trials, we get a numerical estimate of 0.3 5, 9, which is pretty close to the analytic solution. You can of course do more trials, but this is just to show how you can get a pretty good answer just by simulation. So now, let's solve the problem analytically. To get started, we'll ask the question, where could the first point be? It could be on the left side of the square, it could be on the bottom side of the square, it could be on the right side of the square, or it could be on the top side of the square. Now we can take advantage of a symmetry of the square. All four of these cases are equally likely. Without loss of generality, we can suppose the first point is on the bottom side of the square. You can imagine after the first point is picked, we can rotate the entire square to force it to be on the bottom side of the square. Now where could the second point be? There are four equally likely cases. One case is that the second point is on the bottom side, the same side of the square. In this case, it's impossible for the distance between the two points to be greater than L. So this probability is zero. The second point could also be on the opposite side of the square. In this case, the probability the distance between the points is greater than L is equal to one. They are necessarily at least a distance of L apart. Now there are two remaining cases. One is that it could be on the adjacent right side, and the other is it could be on the adjacent left side. Now by symmetry, each of these probabilities will be equal to each other. So we need to figure out the probability that D is greater than L in one of these cases. So let's suppose it's on the adjacent left side. We will now set up a coordinate system. Let's suppose the first point is x comma 0 and the second point is 0 comma y. The square is l comma l. We will further consider the line between these two points and look at the midpoint of this line, which will have coordinates x over 2 and y over 2. Because the points are chosen at uniform, x and y are uniform on 0 comma l. That means the midpoint m is uniform on 0 comma L over 2 by 0 comma L over 2. So let's think about what that means graphically. Let's consider the extreme cases. Suppose the second point is all the way at the left top corner of the square, and the first point is all the way at the bottom right corner. This will be the maximum values for the midpoint M of X over 2 and Y over 2. This will be the corner of a square with endpoints L over 2 comma L over 2. Now, for any other way that we pick the points, we will be stuck somewhere inside of this square. 
So the point M is uniform between all of the points of this square. So we can now ask, what is the locus of points M for which the distance between the two points has a length exactly equal to L, the side length of the square? Let's work through some examples. So we can imagine the two points are like this. The distance between them is exactly L, and the midpoint will be right here. If we slide this over, the midpoint will be here. We can slide it over again, and we continue tracing out all of these points. So what shape does this resemble? We exactly get a quarter circle. Now we can actually prove this. So let's take a look at our diagram here. Now m is at x over 2 comma y over 2. So this will split this diagram into two congruent right triangles where one leg is equal to x over 2 and the other leg is equal to y over 2. Now the length of half of this distance will be l over 2. So each of these hypotenuses is equal to l over 2. Therefore, we have the square of x over 2 plus the square of y over 2 is equal to the square of l over 2. This exactly describes the path of this quarter circle. Now where do we go from here? Take a look at the region that's contained in this quarter circle. If m is anywhere in here, the distance between the two points will be less than l. So the probability that d is less than or equal to l is equal to the area of the quarter circle divided by the area of the shaded square. So the area of the quarter circle is 1 over 4 multiplied by pi multiplied by the radius squared. The radius is equal to L over 2. And the area of this square is equal to the square of L over 2. So this simplifies to be pi over 4. But remember, we want the probability that D is greater than L. So that will be the remaining area. So the probability that D is greater than L will be the complement event. So this works out to be 1 minus pi over 4. So we're now ready to do the final calculation. There are four equally likely cases for the second point. And we figured out the last two cases each have a probability that's equal to one minus pi over four. Now each of these four cases is equally likely, so each has a probability of one over four. So the final probability will be equal to one over four multiplied by the sum of these probabilities. And this exactly works out to be three over four minus pi over 8, which is approximately equal to 0.357. And that's the answer. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.